All right, our read aloud today is a fable. It's by Aesop. And most fables are called Aesop's Fables. And so we're going to read the fable about the fox and the crane. We're going to listen to it. The Fox and the Crane, based on a fable by Aesop. Has anyone ever played a trick on you? How can a trick teach a lesson? Fox and Crane used to be the best of friends. They had a real affection for each other. But one day, that changed. Why was that? Well, as you know, foxes are sly and tricky. And this fox was as crafty as the next. It all began when Fox, who loved food, wanted to taste the food that Crane ate. I'll invite Crane to my house for dinner, he said. After that, she will surely invite me to her house for dinner. Then I will be able to taste her food. The next day, Fox saw Crane. Will you come to my house tonight for dinner? He asked. I will make soup. I'd love to come, said Crane. I'll see you tonight. Okay, so who is going to invite who over for supper? Ellie? The um, or something. Okay, so the fox is going to invite the crane over for supper. Now, why is he inviting the crane over for supper? What's the reason? Why does he want to invite crane over? Lewis? Do you think he wants to eat him? It, yeah. Maybe that could be part of it. But he said something in here. He's the foxes are sly Wait. and he tricky. Wants to eat the other one so he can go to his his house forever and eat her food. Yeah, he wants to go to her house to eat her, her food. food, right? Maybe not eat her, but eat her food. But we know foxes are sly and tricky. What does sly mean? If somebody is sly, what does that mean, Eli? Eli? They're tricky. Yeah, they're tricky. It's kind of another word for tricky, okay? So they're kind of, um, they kind of very, if somebody's sly, you just know that they're kind of thinking and they're very tricky, okay? Lewis? And tricky is not a word. Tricky, yep, tricky is a word. If somebody is tricky, they How? like to trick you. Okay, now we're going to see what happens on the next part. That night, Crane arrived for dinner. My soup is always delicious, said Fox. You'll get a lot of nourishment from it, too. I hope you will like it. But Tricky Fox did not really want Crane to eat the soup. He wanted it all for himself. So Fox came up with a crafty plan. He served the soup in very shallow bowls. Fox could lap up all the soup in his bowl, but Crane could not lap up the soup in hers. She twisted her long neck this way and that way, but all she could do was dip the end of her long bill in the bowl. No matter how she tried, she could not eat the soup. After dinner, Crane said, Thank you so much for inviting me to dinner, Fox. I hope you will come to my house for dinner. In fact, why don't you come tomorrow night? Wonderful, said Fox. I will see you then. Okay. After Crane left, Fox enjoyed the rest of the soup. Then he smiled. Now I will get to taste Crane's food, and I did not have to share my own. How come he didn't really have to share his? Ellie, A, why didn't he really have to share his? Because it was in a small bowl. Yeah, it was in a smaller, they said shallow. So shallow, shallow means it's not very deep. And if you look at the crane's beak, is the crane able to eat out of this bowl very well? What do you guys think? No. What do you guys think? No. Oh, I don't hear most of you. No. Okay. No, Crane is not able to eat out of this bowl very well. So Crane didn't eat very much of the food. Now Fox has all this food that he can eat. But he's so excited because what does he get to do tomorrow? Addie? He's 
going to go to Crane's house. Now, remember, the reason why he invited Crane over was that so that he could get invited over to her house. Okay? So, so if you invite someone over, it's kind of polite to, for them to invite you back over sometime. And so that's what Crane is doing. Okay? All right, now let's look at this page. This page is even better. The next night, Fox was very hungry when he arrived at Crane's house. Crane had made fish stew. It smelled so good that Fox began to crave some right away. Now it is my turn to feed you, Fox, said Crane. My fish stew is always delicious. I hope you will like it. Fox sat down, and Crane served the stew. But she served it in tall jars with long and narrow necks. Crane could pull out the pieces of fish with her long bill. She ate all the stew in her jar. Fox, though, could not get his mouth into the neck of the jar. He twisted his head this way and that way to seek pieces of fish. But no matter how he tried, Fox could not get them. <gasps> so, Crane invites Fox over for supper, but what trick does Crane play on the Fox, Libby? Yeah, she gave him a different kind of bowl other than the bowl that he had. Remember, he gave this shallow bowl and Crane wasn't able to eat out of the shallow bowl and now Crane gave him these tall um it, they almost look like flower vases to Mrs. Murphy yeah. where you put flowers in yeah. now why did she give that kind of um, bowl or vase to him why did she do that Brooklyn why did she do that Maybe that's all she has in her house, so that's what she uses, maybe. But I think what you said, the first thing, is that she's trying to play a trick on him because did he play a trick on her? What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 You guys are so sleepy today. Yes. All right, so let's see what happens now. Fox got so frustrated that he picked up the jar and tried to pour the stew into his mouth. But the pieces of fish got stuck in the narrow neck. Fox could not get any fish stew to eat. Why, Fox, said Crane, you are not eating your dinner. Don't you like fish stew? Well, Crane, answered Fox, if I could get some to eat, I'm sure it would be delicious. Crane did not apologize. She just smiled. Fox knew that he had been tricked, and he was not happy. He had tried to get a free meal, and his crafty plan had not worked. Crane had been even craftier. She had tricked Fox. But what could Fox expect? Wise people and animals know that he who plays a trick should expect to be tricked in return. Okay. So, on this card, or this page up here, Fox is frustrated. Kinsley, what does frustrated mean? I'm really not. Kind of mad or discouraged. Like he was hoping to get some food, and did he get any food? No. No, because when he tried to, he said he tried to pour it, like the stew in his mouth. And as he tried to pour it, the fish just kept, kept getting stuck in the middle of it, where it was very narrow and skinny. So he couldn't even eat any fish. And so he was very frustrated and he left and he wasn't happy because he got tripped. Eli. He, the only part of the stew I think he only got was the juice. Probably just the juice. I would agree with you. So he probably just got the juice and no actual food, right? Now, now at the end, just a second, Lewis, it says, but what could Fox expect? 
Wise people and animals know that he who plays a trick should expect to be tricked in return. You're so Charlotte and Parsons. if you play a trick on someone, what should you expect in return? Why, if you play a trick on someone, like let's say you play a trick on Mrs. Murphy, what should you expect in return? A trick. You should expect me to try to trick you back, right? So if you trick somebody, they're going to probably trick you back, okay? So who thinks they know what the lesson that we learned from this story is? Okay, Lewis? Right, so he tricked her, so she tricked him in return, right? Yeah. So who thinks they know? What is the lesson we can learn from this story? Addy, what do you think? Um, never play a trick on someone who has turned and get you back no matter what. That's a good, that's a good lesson. If you play a trick on someone, be prepared for them Here to play a trick on you. Here's what you could do. Um, so when they came to um, you, um, Okay, last one, Brooklyn. Okay, what do you think the lessons learned? I want the lesson learned. Yes, and, the, and they said it. Freddy Freddy book, yeah. how the key, Freddy played a trick on Max, mm -hmm. played a trick on Max, so Freddy should be ready for a trick in return, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now, in this book, guys, Aesop Fables, guess what story is in here? The Fox and the Crane, and at the very bottom, it always tells us a lesson learned, and tomorrow I'll be reading a couple of these. I won't read this one again because we listened to it today. But at the bottom, here is the lesson that's to be learned. And I think your mom and dad have taught you this lesson. And we have learned it through the story today. Have you guys heard this? Treat others as you want to be treated? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the golden rule. And that is what's being learned from the fox and the crane. You treat other people as you want to be treated. Okay? Because if you want to treat them poorly, remember how the fox kind of treated the crane poorly, then guess what? He's going to be treated poorly in return. So treat others as you want to be treated. Okay, this week, I love this week, guys, because fables are really fun. And they're always about, I forgot to mention this, they're usually about two animals, or sometimes more. But they're usually never, once in a while, about people. Tomorrow, we do have a person, the boy. But most of the time, they're about animals. 